right, we have talked about how to use SSH. Now we're going to talk about how to use API web calls. Uh, so you can do it multiple different ways. We're going to still send a message to Splunk just so we can, you guys can test this. No matter what your system is, you should be able to do this. And uh, makes it a little easier to make that connection. So what we're going to do here, we're going to come down. If you don't understand the context of what we're trying to do, please watch the previous video on the SSHing, and we'll explain why we did what we did. Here, we're just going to do it a different method, but it unlocks another app, another piece that we can use in our playbooks. So I'm going to come here to apps, and this time I want another Splunk app, which is HTTP. You'll notice I'm staying very much in the Splunk. What frustrates me when I watch a lot of these uh, Splunk uh, SOAR videos is they're dealing with changing firewalls or changing specific technologies. And I don't, not everybody has those technologies, not everyone has those right. Maybe there's a change control process. You're not just, it's hard to uh, use. I want the Splunk apps and some of the things I've got here, pretty much anyone can use them. So that's what I'm trying to stick around with. Um, they're very, as long as you've got a Splunk instance, you can do any of these things I'm doing in Phantom. So how do you find this? Go to Splunk base. We're going to go look for an app and I'm just going to type in HTTP. or not have it search whichever way it wants to go http run that run the splunk cloud there's my http download it install it you're good to go and again if you don't have install you just install app drag and drop that download onto there and you're good to go all right i am not going to configure a brand new asset because there's a lot of moving pieces on this one rest apis i'm going to be honest they're not my biggest strength my forte i do them but i definitely um one who has to take my time doing them, otherwise I mess it up. So I'm just going to take one that's already pre-configured, Splunk API, and I'm just going to walk you through it. I give it a name, just like I've done everywhere else. I can give it a description if I want. Once again, asset settings, that's where all the magic works. And here you put your base URL for making the queries. Well, I'm using my 119 machine. I could put whatever one I want in here. This is an example. If you're going to make web calls to somewhere else, you're going to need more than one asset. So if I want to call out to my new, if I want to call it to my uh, dev box, my 155, I would need to make another asset and put the 155 stuff in here. But uh, that's, so that's one of the reasons you might have more, more than one asset. In this case, you can't just SSH you, it allows you to supply an IP address. Here it does not. You are, the IP address is baked. You don't have a lot of configuration changes as far as I'm aware. And then, uh, again, it's what it's doing. It's using the services messages. We can see that by looking at the code. You're just basically taking the piece right after the, the, the IP address there. And you're throwing that in there. So that's your endpoint for connectivity. And then your uh, authentication token. Just leaving that alone. It's a phantom auth token. And here is my username, admin, and then I put my password in. If you were using OAuth, things like that, you could use those. And anyway, so I'm going to test my connectivity. And it passed. So I just have to put those values in, and we're good to go. All right, let's see this in action. And again, I'm going to be referencing my other one just so I don't mess it up. But because there are a lot of moving pieces there. Come on. Give me a drawing. And I'm going to draw another part out here. And it's going to be an action. And that action is going to be this time Splunk HTTP. I'm going to post data. So actually, it looks like I can use a different location. So you may not need multiple assets. My bad. Nope, I was wrong. So that's where you take that services messages. So it's already built in the IP address with the port 8089. But you're going to have to put your location piece in there. And in the body, expand that out. The body runs in a JSON format. So you have to use slightly different. And so they here message severity 
and info. And so they basically change the way stuff writes a little bit. And this is my value, so I could change that to whatever I want. But um, this will be the message that's written, message and severity. So there we go. That's how I put that information in. It's a slight modification. You can't just use the minus D, but value, that's your name there, name, severity. Unfortunately, they don't use the exact same name. That's uh, You'll have to look in the documentation sometimes. But I did that, and it's called message and severity, and then name. Anyway, it is what it is. That's why I copy and paste. Otherwise, I tend to mess it up. But you've, I've got, I'll leave that there so you can use it. Okay, we don't need to verify the certificate. That makes the minus K on there. And we are done. And so, oh, I didn't actually copy that. My bad. Come over here, grab the body, paste it in the other one. Remember to remove the hit this and hit done. Now we're going to turn this one off. And just use post data. I could run them both. They're going to give different messages, so it doesn't really matter. But for now, post data, it's ready to go the messages using that API, so let's go ahead and test it. Close that. I have to hit save. You can't run the debugger until you've hit save. All right, not sure quite what happened there. Um, I just did a recopy and paste. Everything's the exact same. I think I had a space somewhere in here that I didn't see an invisible spacing. Anyway, it works. I can hit save. Close this, run the test. Everything's successful. Give it a second, jump over. Testing new hint, and we should be getting a message popping any second. There it is, test message. So that's another way that we can leverage Phantom. So or we can uh, use HTTP API calls, curl calls, etc., and it's not curl, it's API, and use and be able to access uh, remote instances, make changes. In our case, we're sending notifications back to Splunk. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you move past being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja, and hope you'll continue watching the videos in this playlist, and uh, feel free to give comments down below if you've got any questions or concerns or things you want to see, and hope to see you back later.